Good morning, Molly. What's up? Oh, hey, Buzz. How are you? Um, I'm good. What are you? What are you? What are you doing? Well, I mean, I'm studying this ladybug. I love ladybugs. You know, they're so cheerful. And they are from the family Coccinellidae, which and but their ladybug name originated in the Middle Ages when this little beetle was dedicated to the Virgin Mary and called Beetle of Our Lady. Fancy. Yeah, there are about five thousand different species of ladybugs in the whole world. And this much loved critter, they're also known as lady beetles or ladybird beetles. They come in many different colors and patterns, but the one we're most familiar with here in North America is the seven spotted ladybug that I have right here in my pooter. So most people like ladybugs because they're pretty and they're graceful and they're harmless to humans, but farmers? love them because they eat aphids and other plant-eating pests. So one ladybug can eat up to 5,000 insects in its lifetime. That's a lot of eating. Ladybugs are also considered good luck. Wait, really? Good luck? Well, then I, I need one of those. I, mean, I, I could never study for a math test again, and I don't have to worry about finding toilet paper anymore. Let me have that. I'm going to go get a jar. Well, I mean, just a minute. That's, that's just an old wives' tale, or sometimes we call that a superstition or an urban legend. Ladybugs don't actually give us luck. You're still going to have to study for that test. And I feel sure you won't have to worry about toilet paper, or at least I hope you have some really nice neighbors. Give your worries and concerns to God and trust God to take care of you. He cares about you. And God provides us with what we need. I know, but it's so hard sometimes. I mean, what, what is school even going to look like? Will we have to wear masks? Will the lunchroom even be able to serve Crispitos? I mean, I, I'm worried we won't be able to find things to eat. Or that, like... One of my parents might lose their job. I mean, what about, what about y'all? This is what one of my friends said. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Amos, and I go to First United Methodist Church at downtown Birmingham. So I have not been worried about running out of groceries or food, but my mom has just been worrying about running out of toilet paper. <laughs> um, I have been worried about others. Um, I've been worried about a lot of things, but not really during quarantine. I've been worried about a lot of people getting sick, and my grandfather, my grandma, my great-grandma. I've been worried about them mostly because I, um, I love them dearly. My mom is kind of freaked out about this right now because we're about to go to the beach. Thank you for watching. Bye! Sometimes I wonder that when my dad goes to the grocery store, he won't be able to find certain things that we need, or when my mom has to go back to the office, that I just wonder when any of that's going to happen. But there are so many stories in the Bible where God provided. And one of my favorites is about Elijah and a widow. I love that story. Let's open our Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 7 through 16. First Kings is found in the Old Testament. So God tells the prophet Elijah to move to a town where God has called a widow to take care of him. The place where Elijah lived hadn't rained in a long time and the brook had dried up. So Elijah does as God told him and he meets this widow. He asks the widow to bring him some water and he also asks her to bring him a piece of bread too. But the woman tells him that she doesn't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a bit of olive oil in a jug. She tells Elijah that she's out gathering wood so she can cook a last meal for her and her son. They only have enough for one more meal and then they'll go hungry. But Elijah tells her not to worry. He tells her to go home and make a small loaf of bread and bring it to him, then to cook something for her and her son. And then he tells her that by doing this, this is what it says, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did, as Elijah said, so that she as well as Elijah and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. 
I mean, just think about it. This widow who only had one meal left trusted what Elijah said to her, and she gave her last bit of food to someone she just met because she trusted that God would provide what she and her son needed. So God does the same for us. You're right. You and me and all of our virtual friends can trust that God will provide for us. There's no need for us to worry or be anxious. We don't need to rely on a ladybug for luck. God provides. We don't have to be afraid. And that brings us to today's memory verse found in Psalms 107, 9. He satisfies the thirsty. He fills up the hungry. This reminds us that God provides. We may not have everything we want, but we can rest assured that we will have everything we need when we trust in God. We hope you'll have a great day learning all about the many ways that God provides for us.